Nicola, uh, dear Governor, dear Mayor, uh, Deputy Ministers, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I, I promise I'll be brief because I'm sure you're <coughs> quite interested in the discussion that will follow. Let me start uh, by thanking uh, all our panelists for their participation in what I am sure will be an extremely illuminating uh, discussion that will lay out the landscape of uh, film and uh, television in the world today. And when you look at the quality of the work they have uh, uh, helped bring forward, including productions like The Killing, Doctor Who, Tehran, War and Peace, or Yeah, you know uh, you are going to be hearing the kind of insight that I'm sure you don't want to miss. And uh, it's a huge honor and a pleasure for me personally to be here today uh, at the Thessaloniki Film Festival. Thank you all for organizing this event. I was informed about the significant progress it has made uh, over the past uh, uh, years. Uh, and uh, it is important that I'm here today amongst the countries uh, and the world's most talented creative minds. As you know, the Thessaloniki International Film Festival uh, is uh, the cornerstone of the modern Greek film industry. And as you pointed out, the line is increasingly being blurred between film and television. And uh, what a force that industry is now showing itself to be with a much greater visibility of Greek talent uh, in international markets, more co-productions, and of course more foreign productions being filmed in Greece. Quite a few of them actually, your mayor, your governor, being filmed here in Thessaloniki, and I understand maybe more interesting announcements will be coming over the next days. Last year alone, there were 200 projects uh, in our country, including over 20 Greek feature films and more than 20 TV and film productions coming from big Hollywood studios. And this year's Pandor uh, winner, The Triangle of uh, Sadness, was co-produced by Heretic, a Greek production company, and was primarily shot on the island of Evia. Meanwhile, Evi Kalogiropoulou's short film on Xerxes' throne also received the Canal Plus Award for short film in uh, Critics Week at Cannes. And as one industry journal pointed out, despite the ravages of COVID-19 and the financial crisis of the late 2000s, the Greek film industry has emerged as a force to be reckoned with on the world stage. Of course, not all of us have the talent to be part of the creative process, but uh, we in government do understand that film is not just a creative endeavor, it's a financial one too, and one that is important for the whole country as the industry directly or indirectly employs more than 100,000 people, while of course having a significant broader financial impact across <coughs> industries and across regions. From the very beginning, we laid out a, a very clear strategy that essentially was based on three pillars that aim to support and grow the audiovisual industry as it uh, continues to build on the success it has enjoyed in the recent years. And across all sectors of the economy, our goal has always been to create the best possible environment for business and investment. And this is, of course, also true for your industry. So our strategy's first pillar was built on incentives, with our country now offering one of the most competitive programs in the whole European Union and having further simplified application and certification processes. I'm sure many of you are well aware with our incentive scheme. We didn't really sort of uh, um, reinvent the wheel. We just looked at what other countries were doing, tried to do it a little bit better. So we have a 40% cash rebate on eligible 
uh, expenses incurred by production uh, in Greek territory for all audiovisual projects with over 140 million already distributed last year. And this can be combined with a 30% tax relief incentive on eligible expenses. Now we've added to that allowing admittance of non-resident labor invoices for projects with eligible expenses over 8 million, up to 50% of eligible costs. And of course, there's also the Hellenic Development Fund to guarantee bank loans up to 900,000 euros for the audiovisual sector and Entrepreneurship 360, which is a special state scheme to support audiovisual studios. Our second pillar is infrastructure. We were very well aware of the lack of adequate sound stages, which uh, is a challenge. And that is why we are aware of the fact that we need more state-of-the-art <coughs> infrastructure, which will enable Greece to be a major audiovisual player, the player we need to be. There is a lot of interest in these types of investments. Some of it actually will take place very close to here in uh, Thessaloniki. And of course, I do need to point out that companies interested in these types of investments can also uh, benefit from extremely low loans from the um, EU's recovery and resilience uh, facility. These uh, loans uh, actually charge an interest which is slightly under 1%, extremely competitive given today's interest rate environment. And of course, the final pillar of our strategy is human capital without the right people, and in particular the right skills, this industry cannot grow. So with the right uh, upskilling of crews, the right workshops for content creation, through programs like the Greek Film Center incubating the film industry, and the development of a national audiovisual school, these are exactly the, the tools that we want to employ to improve the skills of especially the young talented people that we have who would like to offer their services to the audiovisual industry. And, uh, 150 kilometers east of here uh, in the city of Rama, which is known for its own international short film uh, festival, a new audiovisual cluster is being developed. It's being designed alongside a film school to nurture startups as well as a new talent for the future. And in addition to all of this, we're moving forward with a much simpler, more effective regulatory framework. The Minister has spoken about that. We constantly try to make it less cumbersome for you to do business uh, in Greece, which includes a streamlined permit process, uh, the development of a network of local film offices, and the reform of the industry's legal framework. And we know that there is more that we can do to uh, ensure that the Greek film industry can get the investment and the funding uh, it uh, deserves, and to ensure that regulation uh, is um, streamlined in order to free up the time of producers to do what they do best, what you do best, which is, uh, of course, to tell stories we all love to watch and uh, hear. Uh, still, until now, no major platforms had shared our stories, the stories of Greek creators. But this has changed this week as Netflix announced the acquisition of the international rights of Greek drama series Maestro. Congratulations, Mr. Abagayatis. You make us all very proud. And we hope we hope that this is just uh, uh, a beginning and that platforms will uh, acquire and why not produce themselves more Greek uh, films and series to come. We are, of course, very proud of our beautiful scenery, our beautiful landscapes. Greece is a country that has not been filmed a lot, which offers a lot of very unique landscapes. For example, the city of uh, Thessaloniki surprised many when it first uh, uh, appeared uh, on screen, but we're of course particularly proud of our uh, extremely talented people. Uh, and it is our job 
to identify them through the and the system through the strategy that I've just described. After all, you know, the art of storytelling, which drives this fantastic event, is something which is deeply embedded in Greek culture. Performing arts were born in Greece. They were born uh, right under the uh, Acropolis uh, in Athens when ancient Greeks for the first time experimented with theatre, not only as a form of entertainment, but also as a form of self-reflection. So the discussion that we will have uh, today, and of course the Thessaloniki International Film Festival, <coughs> shows uh, that this tradition is very much alive in Greece today. It is vibrant, it is energized by new ideas, and despite the passing of two millennia, still has an exciting future ahead of it. Thank you very much for your attention.